that's one thing I want to do. Another thing I wanted to do was uh, to very quickly give you a um, overview of uh, uh, the Fermat's last theorem proof. So that goes via this uh, modular forms. And modular forms essentially come out of uh, the zeta function. When you like, keep on generalizing this properties of zeta function, you eventually end up with modular forms. And uh, their connection with uh, firstly elliptic curves and then secondly with uh, the Fermat's last theorem. So, but let us see how much I can cover. Okay, so, today we will start with our first step towards uh, generalizing whatever we have done and that would be for uh, Dirichlet's theorem. This states Well, what you would what would you expect? So, okay, a and q are two numbers which are relatively prime to each other, and define psi a q psi x a q. Oops, is the number of not quite number, but sum over all primes p less than or equal to x, such that p equals a modulo q. So you are now you are not counting all the primes; you are only counting primes which are a modulo q and are less than or equal to x and the summing over of the, the weight we sum with again same. So, what would you expect this quantity to be? So, now all the primes less than or equal to x fall into different conjugacy classes right with respect to q. How many such conjugacy classes are there? Sorry? Q no. A must be relatively prime to so, if q is prime, then q minus 1, but if q is not prime, then certainly not q minus 1, it is uh, phi of q, yeah, it is Euler, Euler function, right. So, that many conjugacy classes. So, if everything, all the primes fall roughly equally in the each one of those, then you would expect this to be. the leading term of psi to be divided by phi of q, because now you are falling in different these many different classes. And the Dirichlet's theorem says that that is basically what you get up to an error. So, this is exactly same as prime number theorem, it is actually a generalization of prime number theorem, because it is you know now dividing the primes into different conjugacy classes and saying that the count in each conjugacy class is uh, what you would expect if things were uniformly distributed. Now, this can be proven essentially you no, follow uh, not essentially completely following it or almost completely following the tools we developed. The entire you know strategy of writing this psi in front in the form of 
uh, see what did you do? We had started with psi, then connected it with the zeta function, right? The count to psi we wrote in terms of an integral which involved uh, zeta prime over zeta, and then we did a contour integral and says that this that contour integral is essentially uh, the sum of the poles of the zeta function and some other ones and that gives this estimate right so we do exactly the same thing for this the difference is that now this becomes a little uh, messier sum because we are counting only primes which are a modulo q not all primes so we need some way of just pinpointing primes a modulo q. So, for that what we will do is we will add some new ideas into this and then follow essentially the whole methodology. So, the new ideas are well one of them actually there is only one new idea. Characters modulo q. So, chi we say is a map which is a homomorphism from z q star to complex numbers. Because if I sum over all the classes, then it should be. No, this is psi, this is not pi. For pi, you will just be divide by log x and then it works out. So, chi is a map from z q star, which is set of all numbers less than q relatively prime to q two complex numbers and z q star happens to be a group under multiplication modulo q and uh, chi is a character if it is multiplicative that is chi of a b is chi of a times chi of b ok. Now, some properties of characters are pretty evident. First is that uh, chi of a is a phi qth root of unity. That is because for any a in z q star, a to the phi q is 1, because the group size of this group is phi of q. So, a to the um, phi q is 1. Therefore, since chi is multiplicative, chi 1 is 1. So, therefore, chi of a to the phi q is 1, which means that um, chi of a is a phi q at root of unity, which obviously implies that the characters always map to unit circle on the complex plane. Okay. And uh, if you let uh, G be the set of all characters. And G is a group. So, that is uh, multiplication of two characters is a another character, and it follows simply by the fact that firstly multiplication of two characters is obviously multiplicative and it again maps uh, uh, z q star to complex numbers. More interestingly size of g is also phi of q. So, it is a group of same size as the group on which it operates. I am not going to prove this stuff, you guys can work out this. None of this is difficult to prove at all. And uh, 
then uh, if you if you sum take a character chi of a and sum over all a's in z q star then uh, one of the two things happen one is that and this is very straightforward to see because these are phi q at roots of unities right different a's oops different a's will be mapped to different phi q at roots of unities or if they are mapped to the same then there will be same amount of uh, mapping to the same one root so this is either phi q if chi is chi 0 0 in the middle where chi 0 is is 1. So, this is a trivial character which maps every element to 1. So, if that is the case then obviously it sums this to phi q if that is not the case then it is just basically you are summing over all roots of unit phi q at root of unity and they will all cancel each other out which is standard. And uh, finally, when you sum over all characters in the group G of chi of A, again two one of the two things happen. If it is psi of q, phi of q if A is 1, 0 other. these are fairly basic facts about characters which uh, some of which we will use. So, how does this relate to the problem we have? Well, if you recall we wanted to identify the those primes which are exactly equal to A modulo q right. Now, one way of thinking about it is uh, A is a residue class modulo q and uh, in which is in z q A is an element of z q star. So, the characters operating on z q star which send it to complex numbers which is which is that essentially the domain that we are in going to work on eventually. So, they can take this transform this problem of uh, you know, looking at residue class of A modulo q to that of looking at certain roots of unities in the complex plane. So, that is a broad picture and that is how it does work out. In fact, what I am going to do now is to define what are called L functions which are generalizations of zeta functions. For that I should have defined what chi of n s. Okay. So, this is a generalization of zeta function almost a generalization not yeah it can say it is a generalization of zeta function where uh, now an additional parameter which it takes is chi or it is defined with respect to chi. The sum is again over n greater than or equal to 1 the numerator is now chi of n. But now here I am using chi of n on all numbers. Chi I have just defined only on z q star. So, I have to extend that definition and that is whatever is the obvious definition we just use it. Chi of n is equal to chi of a for so if q and n are not relatively prime then chi of n is 0 if they are relatively prime then uh, you just take n go modulo q take the residue class in which it belongs in the chi of a the value of chi of a. So, it is basically cycles the value of chi is 
cycle in a cycle length of q, right? Chi of 0, we can also define chi of 0 is 0, chi of 1 is 1, chi of 2 is uh, whatever chi of 2 is. You go up to and any, any point where you hit a number which is relatively not relatively prime to q, chi of that number is 0. Otherwise, chi of that number is defined as by the definition. Reach up to q minus 1, then you go to q, chi of q is 0 and then you cycle back into this exactly the same pattern and that pattern keeps on repeating. Okay. And now, these L functions play the same role as the zeta function. So, when we translate that psi of uh, x a q as an integral over complex plane, we find these L functions to be 0. I okay. will show you that, but uh, may be not today, tomorrow. But let us spend some time in trying to understand what these L functions look like. So, what about uh, how does L z chi 0 look like, which is the simplest of these L functions. Chi 0 is 1, but it is not 1 everywhere. So, it is not quite the zeta function. Chi 0 is, uh, it is 1 precisely when n is not co prime to q. So, this is uh, n greater than equal to 1 and q is 1, 1 over Now, is there a way of writing that it is certainly messier or more complicated than the zeta function, but can we write it as in the same form that multiplicative form that we could do for zeta function. Each of the prime factors p comma q is 1 of 1 over 1 minus 1 by p d j. So, it has although it is little more complicated than zeta function, it still has that same uh, multiplicative expression and that is really the one of the real key points of studying was one of the key point of studying zeta function. In fact, all, almost all the results we used about zeta function came out of this product form because then we took log of zeta which translated this into sum and then the derivative or just use the log itself. So, all of that comes only because we can have this multiplicative form which does exist in this case. So, which is good to know so that we can play around with this more easily. Okay. Similarly, let us take a general character. Does this have a multiplicative form? does and that is exactly this as you would expect. Why? This needs a bit of justification. If you write this down, I rather write this as a infinite power sum, you get 1 plus chi p over p to the z plus chi p whole square by p to the 2 z and so on. Right? Chi of p whole square is same as chi of p square. So, that is infinite sum can be written as chi of p to the i by p to the i z somewhere. And then when you multiply with this odd primes p which are relatively prime to q, you just get all numbers chi of n and divide by um, n to the z for all n which are relatively prime to q. Chi n is 0 whenever n is not relatively prime to q. So, here we are crucially using the fact that the character chi is multiplicative. 
if it is not multiplicative this factorization does not work, because it is multiplicative it is possible. And that is the second uh, that is really the defining property in a sense or a key property in order to get such a factorization over primes for that infinite sum. Okay. So, later on we will see we will put in more complex things here uh, than just the characters, but that is a key property we will always want to have that whatever we put in here factorizes. So, both of I mean general in general L functions admit such a factorization. Now, very quickly because again for zeta function we know that uh, it has a pole at z equals 1. What about these? Do they have poles at z equals 1? So, again let us go back to the first the, the trivial character as it is called chi 0 does it have a pole at z equals 1. So, you just put z equals 1 in this sum. So, this is uh, like a logarithm what is called harmonic series, but some pieces are missing right. So, what are the pieces which are missing? pieces which are missing are for all n's for which uh, n q is greater than 1. Now, does that make any significant difference in the sum that is a question. Okay. Now, are you saying that uh, the sum this sum is uh, the full sum minus a finite number? Yeah. No, that is not true. No, not a finite number, the primes mm -hmm. that we will use they will be finite. Yes, primes will be finite, that is true. No, but the sum would not be finite. No, no series is infinite, but the sum is finite. Why the sum would be finite? No, this is for so for example, let us say q is 2 times 3. Okay. So, what are we excluding? We are excluding all n's which are multiples of either 2 or 3. No, it would not be 1 plus 1 by. So, what we are excluding is 1 by summation 1 by 2 n. We are also excluding summation 1 over 3 n and we are we are counting their product twice. So, we have to add so this is like inclusion exclusion principle we have to add summation 1 by 6 n right. So, okay, let us let us do that. So, let us say let p 1 p 2 to p l divide and no other prime. So, all multiples n all n's which are multiples of any of this are excluded, but now we have to. So, we basically we can write as uh, we know in this zeta 1. Okay. Then we have to subtract what do we subtract? Summation i going from 1 to l 1 over p i times zeta 1. 
okay so now we are over over subtracting so we have to add back and i not equal to e right again zeta 1 Minus m so so this is like exclusion inclusion exclusion that goes on here. So basically, zeta one is always there that is ever present. Times one minus summation i one over p i plus summation i j one over p i p j i not equal to j minus m so on. Is this a recognizable quantity as long as actually at least as long as we show this is not zero we are done because zeta 1 we know is infinite this is what it is and that's it problem solved Now, what about when you have non principal character or non trivial character, then what about L1 occurred? Does this diverge? Chi of zeta 1 times chi of pi in this case. Number of terms are same essentially. Yeah. We are running over all n q. Uh, psi of n is I am taking uh, psi of 8 n. So, basically, uh, instead of 1, we have a number greater than 1. So, it will be the original series plus some other positive series. So, it will diverge. Will diverge. So, why is this? How does the original series come from? No, it is a complex number, it is always on the unit circle on the complex plane. So, it could be minus 1 also for example, actually it converges, very simple proof. Look at the absolute value. Do I want to look at absolute value? Um, hmm. I need to be. I don't want to. That's why I don't want to take look at absolute values of chi. Oh, but it is n. Oh, okay, no problem. What? Okay. Oh, there is no z here. But let's forget for the time being the denominator. And suppose we are just summing up the numerator over all ends. Does this sum diverge? Is it diverge? That is basically being undefined, that is right. But since we are, um, so what? I am not saying it converges to a value, I am asking you does it diverge. So, if you sum it up in the usual sense of using the prefixes, this is always less than equal to q, actually 5. Because the first q 
when you sum up the first cube, the you get zero. These are roots of unities, non-trivial roots of unities. So they just circle around, and you when you add them up, you get zero. The next cube, zero again. The next cube, zero again. So whatever is the segment which is left out, actually, actually I shouldn't write this as strictly speaking. What I should write is put an upper bound here, capital N, and then it is for any n. This is bounded by this. Now let us come to this sum. Uh, what can we say about this sum? I want to show that this is also the convergent. It has only phi of q non zero term in that segment of length q, and I am just adding them all up. Of course, it is not the case, it will not be, it will be less than phi of q, but in the worst case. So now, when you stick a n in the denominator, what happens to this? It should still be bounded, but what is the way to show? So let us take a segment of length q after several initial large number of initial ones. So, what happens to that? Let us say n q less than n less than equal to n plus 1 q. Okay. This would be, uh, if you see the denominator here, it will vary from n q to n plus 1 q. So, denominators would roughly be the same when n is large, then the difference is uh, just between the denominator value is n q to n q plus q, and so q is of course the fixed quantity. So, it is going to be very minor difference in the denominator, right. So, and the if the denominators were equal, then this sum is 0. In that case, could still be less than one because that series diverges. Which series diverges? I mean, without the n in the denominator, mm -hmm. that 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 converges. Mm -hmm. So now, if you look at the other series and mm -hmm. compare the successive terms, then I think uh, the ratio can be written in terms of the original series times some quantity, which probably is less. That's less than one. Yes, but uh, the original ones here those are complex numbers, so I don't know how to. That was more for reals that you that holds <laughs> complex numbers that doesn't work. So, I mean this this is rough. This should be very close to zero. And as n grows bigger and bigger, this should approach zero. Quite rapidly, I would say, because okay, let me write it in the following way. 